Hey guys and welcome to Fez Air Software. Today I'm going to do a disassembly on this Double Eagle EK47 or AR47. Hey guys and welcome back. If you do enjoy this content today, please do consider liking, commenting and subscribing because those interactions help me get seen by the YouTube algorithms and will help the channel to grow. Um, if you want to support the channel a little bit more, my socials are all linked down below on the link tree uh, link in the description. Come and say hello, drop me a message, that kind of thing, give me a follow. And if you want to support the channel a little bit more, channel memberships on the join button down below will take you to uh, channel memberships in YouTube. 99 pence a month, totally optional, really appreciated. Custom content, custom videos, custom giveaways, private chat uh, in the Discord, and a bit of say and influence over me and the channel in terms of what, what I'm doing, unboxing, that kind of thing. Totally optional, really appreciate it. So let's get cracking then with this beauty. So hopefully you've seen the unboxing. If not, it's linked down below. We're uh, going to get into disassembly of this uh, piece of kit. So uh, we did discuss that this muzzle brake is just a 14mm negative and it will just unscrew happily now in terms of removing the rail unit you've got two screws here we might as well do it so t25 a torx 25 for these back two bolts i'm going to lift those out and the retaining bolt just drops out now there is just one shape way shape it will go in so obviously keep that in mind that when it goes in it sits like that like it's flush with the rail put that out of the way we've then got another little screw up here Oop, i was going to say it's not a t8 but it is a t8 so i've got my t8 and that's going to go in there now this extra screw I think really makes the difference for the stability of this handguard and really sort of brings it to uh, quite stable and then that should, when it does, just slide off. You've then just got a couple of screws there and the one there and one there and the gas block will come off and then you've just got a barrel nut there that undo that and this then will, will come off if you need to get into there and replace out a barrel front end and that kind of thing. So I'm just going to chuck that back in there Put that screw back in there. That's one. Change that back to the Torx 25. Drop that back into place. I've got my finger resting underneath there to hold it. One screw, two screws. Now I went backwards slightly there just to make sure I get the clip to indicate that it's dropped into the, the threads because there shouldn't be any force needed. If you're having to force things before it's sort of tightened down, then you're gonna break something basically, you, you're doing your threads in. So, next thing we're gonna do, excuse me, put those back for now, is we're gonna take the stock off. So again, I'm just gonna extend it, I'm gonna pull that pin down, which is a little bit painful, and that gives us access to the stock tube, and then I'm gonna push the front pin out, Probably going to do, take that off camera to tap that through. So just started the pin going through. That's released that pin. And straight away it's all separating for me to help me out. I'm just going to slowly separate those out. Now the barrel and hot unit oh that's unusual so okay that's how unusual right so we've got in there maybe i should have unscrewed that first uh, let's get a phillips head so we've got three screws in there One, two, they are so far the same size. Three, and then does that come down? Does that 
that go up. That comes out and forward. Our two screws there. Now, I don't think that's going to come out. Ah, there we go. So I had to release the clip there. So obviously the, the nozzle was in the way and the hop unit is a little bit proprietary. So it's sat hooked in like that. So the BBs come feed up this tube and into the hop unit. Now, this is the retaining clip that keeps the BBs in there. And I can see it's pulling that out in there. It also releases the hop unit out of there. So I just had to angle it around, but I had to remove those screws first to get it to angle up and out so let's get that hop unit fully on now the barrel a little bit mucky that could be me playing that could just be mucky anyway let's turn that hop fully on now there is the hop fully on oh, i can see that there we go that's the hop fully on now there's not an awful lot or doesn't appear to be an awful lot of hop in there now i didn't have to seem to have to put an awful lot of hop on to hop two fives very very easily and it was really throwing them some distance out there um so I don't know what they're doing, but it's working because, uh, you know, it's really throwing stuff out there. So now we're down to uh, the gearbox and the rest of the receiver then. So let's just have a look at how is that connected. Right. First thing we're going to do, let's get the stock tube off before we figure that out. So it's a hex bolt down there, so I'm going to need my extension bar. Got my extension bar. And that, let's have a look. Let's go with, let's try the T25 first. That seems to be a reasonable guess at the size. And it was the correct guess. So T25 in there, undo that hex bolt. And there's the screw, there's the retainer, and there is the little washer that goes in as well. So that is the assembly like that. That's how it should be set up inside your stock tube. I'm just going to carefully pull that out. There we go. There is what is effectively a sling plate as well. So that is the orientation of that sling plate going on. Perfect. There is our quick change spring system. So let's get a flat head. So Phillips, there's a flat head. So I'm just gonna push in, quarter turn. There we go. Quarter turn. Jiggle it about a little bit. Looks to be a little bit caught. Maybe just things are not quite, the gearbox shell's not quite letting it out. Seems to be a little bit of red grease knocking about here. I'll leave that to, for now. We'll come back to that in a moment and have a look at that. Next thing we do is we're going to get the pistol grip off. So I've got a couple of screws here. Yep, yeah, Torx 8 on these screws. There's one. There's two. So we've got the red wire is coming up the back of the pistol grip onto the red terminal at the back. The black wire is coming up the back as well and comes round onto the uh, black terminal at the front. So a little bit different. Get those out of the way. There is our double eagle motor, double belt, double eagle motor. Keep getting those brands confused, I apologise. Both double eagle and double belt. So next we're going to remove the two screws in the pistol grip. There's one. The other one stayed in there, but I'm wiggling that loose. So I'm just going to carefully... So the black wire actually came in at the front, came round to the back, 
up and then back round and over again the red wire comes in at the back up and onto its terminal at the back now to get the next bit out I am pretty sure I've got to knock there's a little pin out in there because of this ambidextrous cut off here pretty sure I need to take that out and this out so I'm just going to take go off camera can do it without there it is look coming out there do need something thinner and longer now that's going to be a bit of a pain i am going to get some needle nose on that and hopefully in fact do you know what i'm not i'm going to use a precision bit there we go, that's pushed it out even further. Now I should be able to get some needle nose on that to separate that out. Got my needle nose, hopefully I've got enough. There it went. So there's that pin, I'll put that over there. So this bar connects through there. Now what you're looking for is, I don't know how well you can see it, but down in here, it connects into this connector under here. There's a little hole for it, which normally in an AR style, Thing you can see I don't know how well my camera can pick that up down in there can't quite get an angle we'll have a, a look at it a re-look at it when uh, when we get it out the gearbox out so put that over there that over there right the next thing then is I've got to release this from here which is a little Phillips head is it that little? So I've got a little Phillips head. That's letting me lift all of that assembly up and out. So I'm keeping it in one piece as much as possible. We'll discuss that when I put it all back together. And that then means that the rest of that gearbox in there is free. Now I'm guessing it's the VFC style. It is. So I'm going to have to remove the selector. So I'm just going to neaten things up a little bit. Just to give myself a little bit more room. Also get this done. So I'm going to need, I'm guessing, Torx 8. And it is a Torx 8. I'm getting good at this. So I've undone the key in the middle. Now I'm going to be careful because there is the clicker on its spring. So this is responsible for the clicking into place. And you don't want to lose those. There it is. Hopefully you can see that. That's come out of, down gently, that's come out of this little hole here, okay? Yeah, that hole there. So that can go back in there, like that, for now. Now notice the orientation, we've got a little notch at the top and we've got like a, a horizontal line notch. If I look into there, now not so much the top notch, but the horizontal line matches with the horizontal line in there. So that, I flip it over, goes in a specific way. The top notch matches, if you can see there's like a little black rim in there, the top notch means that the selector will only go round a certain direction, which is obviously what we want, and not in another direction. So all we've got left now is this selector, the trigger pin, and the back body pin. So let's remove this selector now. Again, the Torx 8. That's done. There shouldn't be a clicker on this side at all there isn't uh, it's just got a horizontal line so that's a horizontal line as well so we've got an indented line on this side an extruded line on this side so the selectors are different they can't be swapped over keep that in mind so now we've just got this trigger pin and this body pin now let's have a look looks like the teeth are on that side let me just bump this out Yep. So the teeth on the pin are on this side of the body. Turns out I need to push that through a bit more. There's the pin out. And then I've got this body pin to knock through. go that was well in there there's its retaining clip just pinged off never mind 
and then we should famous last words there goes the, one of the cogs that's fine bring our wiring through plenty of room come on easy and there's our motor wires like that now that is the safe position for our gearbox so if you're wondering when you're putting it back together that is the orientation that you need to be in for safe on this side of the gearbox on the other side let's have a look I'm guessing let's have a look now if you look There is a slight difference in those connectors on there. Let's have a look. So there's a, there is a slight difference. One of those gaps is bigger than the other. I am right. So I don't know how clearly you can tell, but this front one here is smaller and that's the direction for safe. So that it will sit nicely like that on the the selector if i try and put it on the other way it's it's not going to sit down and you're going to thread something so smaller bit to the front larger to the back for safe get those out of the way for now next thing i'm going to do i'm going to lift the receiver out of the way uh, so i'm just going to use a flat head to just get under there and pry this apart And what I'm doing there is just separating it from this gear on this side. It looks like this one. There we go. Look. So they are a D type on the end. So I'll show you this side. As you can see there, there's a D shaped hole. There's a D shaped tab on there. And that's how they go together through the gearbox. So now we're ready to get the spring out. Which I'll just prepare myself for quarter turn there we go just needed a bit of wiggling let's come in there we go so there's our metal spring guide bearing based at the bottom there is our spring coming out as well and our gearbox now is not under compression so we are ready to take out all of our parts now those look like they are t10 they are what we have got is just this little part here in the way so i'm just going to take so i've got a spring here that's got a long arm that's hooked into this hole at the bottom hoops around this peg and sits under here so i'm just going to hold that down whilst i undo this screw no it's not quite big enough there we go. So I just needed a little Phillips head for that. And that's come out. And then I'm going to hold that down. Put that to one side. We'll come back and discuss that shortly. We'll discuss that shortly. And now we're ready for our T10 to take all these screws out and have a look inside the gearbox. Make sure you keep the screws together so you know in the right order so you know exactly where they've come from. Some people, I won't say raw, is it Rawlings diagram? Where you, you've got like a, an image of like a, an outline shape of the gearbox for example and you you push the screws into the diagram to show where they've come from specifically to help you with your uh, rebuild i'm sure it's a rolling diagram i apologize if it's not if it, it's not a rolling diagram somebody let me know different all these screws so far appear to be the exact same length uh, from all the four top ones are the same and all the ones so far around the bottom are the same. So don't worry too much if they get mixed up. Just know that the short ones are from the top and the longer ones are from the bottom. 
Next one. One more. There we go. So, that's all done. I'm just going to pop that open. I don't have to brace anything because there's no compression left in there. Because the spring's out. And there we go. Now, it is much like all the other Double Eagle gearboxes. Good effort at shimming. Nice and well built. Grease, but not too greasy. You know, I am really impressed at the quality that Double Eagle are, are turning out. And, you know, before I've, I've referred to them and, and, and wrongly so referred to them as, you know, great budget starter and all that kind of stuff. And yes, they are a budget product. They are not, not very expensive, but man alive, are they worth every bit of money and they are, compete so well with basically, arguably, significantly more expensive brands in terms of range, accuracy, out-of-the-box performance. They're just, honestly, why everybody hasn't got one, I don't know, because they are well worth the money. I am just trying to get hold of a shim there that has just come off. Can I get it with? There you go. A little bit more magnetic screwdriver. Put that on there. In fact, I'll put it in the top there. Try not to keep the shims where they should because you don't want to um, damage the shimming going off because you obviously you don't want to end up with um, things over tight and shimming because that can cause issue and damage. So a nice little bit of grease in going off in there, just enough to get things running smooth. Let's have a look at the compression. Let's lift the compression assembly. Oh, that's well stuck in that. There we go. So, take the nozzle off first. So we've got a cylinder head. I'm just going to brace my finger on the cylinder head and hopefully uh, that's just going to... Yeah, just... There's a tiny bit of air leak, but it's really good compression in there. I expect it to be slightly worse again because you're working against another sort of... Again, there is definitely pressure needed to do that so there is compression in there so i'm happy with that so i can reassemble that quite happily so all i've done then is i've just put the nozzle back on the tapping plate i've hooked it back on the front of the cylinder head the pistons teeth are lined up facing this tapping plate the yellow tapping plate and the spring is on in this orientation here ready to hook on the little post down here so all i do is i hook it on the post and then oops a miss and then start to get a bit sweary. There we go. Drop that in place. Now, this cylinder should sit, if I run my finger along there, it should be pretty much flush to the gearbox case, which tells me it's in the right place. The piston then should be sat on the, this track here, so the teeth are in, in the right place. And that is everything. I'm just going to turn that gear around a little bit. I'm keeping the sector gear teeth completely out of the way of the piston. And that's running up and down happily. Push down the trigger. Now, traditionally in a normal EG, you have a trigger trolley here which pushes it, makes a circuit. What you have here is on the underside of this board, you've got sort of like an angled array of little sensors here. Let's point to them a little bit better here, look. These little things here, these are the trigger detection sensors. When So when it detects, and that's how you adjust the sensitivity of the trigger. Basically, the earlier sensors will trigger the shooting earlier. Um, and you just click that in there like that. And then you've got a sensor on the end of here and another one underneath that detect the teeth of the sector gear spinning around. That's how it knows it's done a cycle and everything. So now that that's in there, I'm happy that that's well shimmed. I'm going to stick that back on there. And then we're just going to drop nicely this uh, back on top. I'm just going to wiggle that about a little bit. And the trigger was just ever so slightly out of position. I just pushed on it and it dropped in. And what I'm looking for is it to sit basically flush, which is all the way around. And now I can screw it back together. So I'll be back in a second. So those are all done now. They're all back in and tightened down. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my spring. Now, this is a non-linear spring because you've got sort of a tighter coil at the back. Sometimes they have a tight coil in the middle and a tight one at the back. That traditionally is where the spring guide should go is in that tighter set of coils. If it's a linear spring where it's a consistent 
sort of coiling pitch all the way along, it's irrelevant which end you basically put it in. Um, and then you just push it back into the gearbox, quarter turn, and what you're looking for, there we go, is for it to pop back out that, that and you know then that it, it's set in its two pegs. The gearbox is reassembled. Next thing we're going to do is going to bring this spring back in. So this spring then has got a long thin arm and a shot of one of the long thin ones sits on there, in there. We're going to hook it around there, like that. Then I'm going to bring in this little arm here that's just going to hook over it like that. And it's going to sit, the whole of it's going to sit on this peg here, there, uh, between this pin and this pin here. And then I'm just going to bring the screw back in and secure this back down. Now, once you tighten that down, what I would say is check that there is still free movement. Now, when we put this back in the box, I talked about this bar coming through. So this bar is going to sit under the gearbox and it connects into that hole there. So when I press on this, it's going to help pull this, this down. So that is the hole in the bar there that I'm talking about when they're putting the receiver back, uh, putting that bar back in the receiver. So next thing I'm going to do then is we're going to put this back into there. Uh, before I do, we need to get the selector uh, gear back in. There we go. So again, that is the safe setting there. I'm going to bring the bar back in. I'm going to drop that bar back in there, like that. Keeping that on that safe positioning. I'm going to bring the other side. Again, I'm looking for that D shape, it's there, look. I'm just gonna compress that together. Now, I did say the short bit should be facing forward, and you're just trying to get it as sort of forward as you can, like that. It's never quite, for some reason, they never seem to sit perfectly straight, but let's just check that it is a smaller one to the front. It is a smaller one to the front. So now we've got the tricky task of, we maneuver the power cable in and back, and then, the motor cables in and back and trying to keep them all in position whilst and synchronized whilst dropping it into place so there is no glamorous way to do this it is literally just now Luckily, the selectors have synchronized themselves that they've both gone at a slight angle. That's absolutely fine. What I am going to do is I'm going to re bring in this rear body pin initially. I'm going to push that in. Now, there is a little retainer clip there. So I'm just going to push that down. Uh, no, I'm not. Because it's going to evade me. There we go. There we go. So just use, as you saw then, a flathead to get that to clip back in place so I know it's secure. I'm also going to bring the trigger pin back in, teeth this side. That's in, that's secure. That's looking good. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the selectors on now just to get that done and out of the way. So I'm just going to drop that one into there. And I can feel that it's locked onto that gear. I'm going to drop that in place and I need the T8 back. So bring the T8 back. That's that one's locked in. And then I'm going to come back around here. Remember that little springy thing. Make sure that that doesn't go anywhere. And I'm finding that. There we go, it's dropped into place there. There we go, and it is clicking in place. I'm just going to tighten that down a little bit 
tighter. There we go. Perfect. Happy days. So, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this assembly back in place. This, just to show you, this just lifts out, but it just sits in here exactly like that. It pushes against this spring and it hinges around there and this little screw retains it down. So I'm just going to drop that in place. So as I push it in, I need to compress this little spring that's pushing the lever out. I probably need there we go so I just m manipulated it around a little bit don't you want to tighten that down but don't over tighten it because you don't want to damage threads anywhere so that it just springs out now this is what we talked about earlier I'm going to push that through and I can see through a convoluted system if it's in place oops it will Move that like that. Now I can push the pin back in, which is possibly one of the thinnest pins I've ever seen for this. There we go. Just had to jiggle that about into the right place to make sure it's sat. And then I'm just going to use my needle nose to push it back in. And that's now working absolutely fine. Happy days. Next we'll get the pistol grip on. One, two, there we go, one of the screws is already in, and the other one is right there. So they went top left in this view, top left and bottom right. So top left, bottom right. The red wire comes up the back and it's going to stay at the back. The black wire needs to come to the back. So you need to push it down. Hopefully you can see in there. I don't know, I can't tell via my phone screen. It's an awkward neck angle. Uh, and I'm going to drop that in. So the red wire comes up this side of this post the black wire comes up that so I'm going to put drop the red wire on I'm going to drop the black wire round and on then there's the screws going out bring the paste grit it should all be free springy there should be no tenseness in that the larger screw goes in at the back there's two different sizes so there's a slightly longer screw for the back and a slightly shorter screw For the front, next bit done. So, next thing we're going to do is bring in the stock. So, this plate at the back just feeds on and along and in like that, just holding it in place. We're then going to bring the stock tube in and put that in place. I'm just going to put the gearbox. In the receiver down like that I'm gonna drop this in I'm trying to keep it as central like that as possible it's fairly close uh, let's put that into there so I need the extension bar the Torx 25 again now what I'm doing is just using this to sort of broadly it around a little bit such a lovely terminology do you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna use the flathead There we go. So what I've done is I've off-angled it that way slightly. Hopefully you can see it. So as I tighten it down, it will bring it round to pretty much square how I want it. There we go. Backwards until I find those threads. There we go. No. So just having slight issues then that um, it was just sort of not going in quite as straight as I thought. And it's 
it's basically turns out it's fine it's because the spring guide is under compression so it's off slightly at an angle but the screw basically pulls it back into uh, direction so just drop that in I use my flathead then to position it more at an appropriate angle go drop that in get that clip Oops. there we go that's more like it there we go so nice and flat and flush and squared off there so we're all happy with that and then the last bit really is to get the hot unit uh, and the o-ring in so I'm going to drop that. Oh, wrong way. Mm. That drops in that way around. So I've dropped that in place there. I'm going to bring the hop and the barrel in that way. I'm just going to drop that down a minute. And that slides in. And then that hooks in like that. And then what I'll do is flip it over. I'll put the screws in. tight but I don't want to over tighten because it is obviously just plastic uh, polymer so I don't want to ruin threads anywhere again make sure you go backwards until you get the click which shows that it's in the threads listen for the click Go. and then we bring in the upper slide that in all the way into place and then push the body pin in there we go click it shut put the connector out of the way pull the pin down there we go and that's it we are done and dusted and finished i hope you've enjoyed that i've enjoyed it immensely please do remember to like comment and subscribe and i will see you next time bye